If humanity were to end today, for how long would evidence of us having been here remain? How far into the future would you have to travel until we had been totally forgotten about? Our massive buildings and cities would last for a while, but given enough time, even they would eventually disappear and crumble away into nothingness. Could it be possible then that there are undiscovered civilizations lost to history from our point of view as well? This is Unveiled, and today we're uncovering the extraordinary traces of ancient civilizations on planet Earth. Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more fascinating content. When looking at ancient and long lost cultures, it takes a massive and combined effort. Historians study past events, archaeologists study the human story through the excavation of sites and artifacts, but there are key roles too for anthropologists, biologists and geographers, naturalists, geologists and sometimes astronomers. The end goal is always to try to understand what gave any given group the high status of civilization. How did they work? And what made them tick? Interestingly, there's no gold standard definition out there for what a civilization is. Experts still disagree on the finer details. But generally, we can say that it's when a large group settles in one spot, organizes itself, and creates things like art and tools. The largeness of the group varies, as does the size of their base. We can see human civilization, for example, as consisting of almost 8 billion people based on planet Earth. But we also think of humanity as having been split into many smaller civilizations, made up of just a few thousand based at specific locations on the world map. The required organization comes through in many ways but most likely via systems of trade, labor, health, and transport. Economies, jobs, sewage systems, and roads all contribute to the framework of a civilization as we humans chiefly understand it. Which is one reason why in the 20th and 21st centuries we've been so keen to build cities. For many, cities are the heartbeat of modern human civilization, with increasing numbers of people flocking to them. Of course, many of our greatest cities have existed for many centuries before things like the Industrial Revolution and the digital boom took hold. Humankind has always tended to group together to get things done. It's just that our advancement has particularly accelerated in recent times. But today, when we look back, the past lives we can see the clearest tend to have at least one similarity. They had a system of writing. Throughout history, at least five major civilizations have created unique systems of writing that other cultures then went on to use. The people of Indus Valley, the Mayans, the ancient Egyptians, ancient Chinese, and the Mesopotamians. A writing system from ancient Egypt is probably the most well-known to us today, hieroglyphs. Although there is some debate over how widely used these actually were, with it thought that they were chiefly used between the higher classes only. The oldest of those big five, however, are the Mesopotamians, who are thought to date back as far as 4,000 years BC. A lot of what we know about them comes from cuneiform, the chief Mesopotamian writing system. But does that mean that Mesopotamia is truly the most ancient civilization to exist in our world? Not likely. First, consider the world-famous Egyptian Sphinx, which some theories suggest could be far older than it seems. It's generally said to have been constructed around the year 2500 BC. But according to one study by geologist Robert Schock, it shows evidence of water erosion that could date it back thousands of years beforehand. This observation can't otherwise be explained, however, so the water erosion hypothesis is still highly questioned. A more widely debated mystery surrounds the megalithic structure known as Gobleki Tepe in Turkey. It's thought to have once been a temple used for worship and consists of hand-cut stone pillars rising some 10 to 20 feet tall. The pillars are then carved and decorated with patterns and inscriptions. What's most interesting, though, is that the researchers believe that Gobleki Tepe dates back 11 millennia. That's to about 9,000 years BC, and at least 5,000 years prior to Mesopotamia. However, there's very little evidence of houses or settlements nearby, and because of this, Gobleki Tepe isn't widely considered evidence of a civilization, although it is doubtless that it did take many people and a coordinated effort to construct it. As for well-known lost civilizations, Atlantis is by far the most famous, but also arguably the least believable. We first learned of it through the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, who wrote an account in his dialogue Critias. He told of the city of Atlantis attacking Athens before being defeated and getting sunk into the sea as punishment. According to Plato, Atlantis had advanced architecture, social organization, and agriculture. Its only downfall was its own arrogance. Most scholars consider Plato's account to be fictional, though that hasn't stopped high numbers of people trying to find evidence of the sunken world. But what about even before Atlantis, or the Sphinx, or Gobleki Tepe? 
Is it possible that there could have been a civilization on Earth before even humanity as a whole? Researchers are generally wary to consider such scenarios, but a particularly high-profile idea has been put forward by Gavin Schmidt and Adam Frank, the Silurian Hypothesis, which serves to question how effectively modern science would be able to detect ancient groups. One of the leading reasons why it's difficult to find evidence of very old civilizations, if there were any, is because Earth recycles its own crust over time. And after millions of years, the secrets that it did once hold are gone. Of course, fossils are one way we have to peer into the past, but they're also incredibly rare, with estimates that only around 0.01% of animals actually become fossils for us to even try to find. If a proposed species was short-lived then, there's almost no chance of fossils for it being uncovered. Think of the dinosaurs. They roamed the planet for more than 180 million years, and yet fossils of even those colossal creatures are still quite rare. For some, it's why in our quest to discover the most ancient secrets of Earth, we should switch our focus from below our feet to above our heads, as advanced civilizations might not leave evidence of their presence in the ground, but in the sky. If we can read the conditions of our atmosphere and plot how the air around us came to develop in the way that it has done, we can begin to scale back through the years. Our burning fossil fuels, for example, has left a clear and distinct mark on our atmosphere. And due to something called the Seuss effect, relating to the changes in carbon isotopes over time caused by the burning of fossil fuels, we can look for similar distinct marks at other points along our planet's history. Similar levels of spiking isotopes occurred during the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum about 56 million years ago, for instance, and at various times in the Cretaceous period. This isn't evidence of other civilizations, but it does help us to visualize the past conditions of Earth, and then to ponder whether any hypothetical civilization could have been built. Equally, a past civilization could just as well be lurking in the gaps between these fossil fuel markers. Perhaps they existed for only a short time and not long enough to dramatically change anything. Or they never relied on burning fossil fuels in the first place. Ultimately, we should give ourselves some credit. Modern humans are very good at plotting their past. We have detailed accounts of up to 6,000 years ago thanks to written text and languages. And we can generally trace ourselves back for hundreds of thousands of years more. Still, although at present there's no solid evidence that there was another civilization as advanced as our own before our own, it's also a line of questioning we'll likely never close off for good. We can search for fossils and wait for a discovery to force a rethink of everything we had previously believed, and we can look to the sky to try to detect clues as to how we got to where we are now. But in the meantime, we can keep trying to piece the human story together. There are more mysteries like the Sphinx and Gobleki Tepe out there waiting to be deciphered. And those are the traces of ancient civilizations on Earth. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.